everyone. Welcome to the SFP June 2020 term of marine conservation. This is me, Dr. Schweiss, and while we may not be able to see each other in person every day and do all the usual fun hands-on activities and field trips that are usually a part of this course, I just so happen to live in a place that is any marine biologist's dream, Hawaii. Throughout this course, I am going to take you on some amazing virtual tours of the various marine reserves on the island that will hopefully make you feel like you are exploring the marine realm right along with me. So turn on your laptops, don your virtual scuba gear, and get ready to dive right into an exciting month of marine conservation. Aloha everyone! For today's field trip, we are going to go to a place known as Kaina Points. This is on the west side of Oahu and it is the most northwestern point on the island. We're going to start off with the drive from my house. We live down in Eva Beach, which is more so on the south side of the island. So you'll see kind of in this time lapse film how we are going from Eva Beach up past Waianae, which is a major town on the west side of Oahu, and then we will make it up to the northwest side. Now normally we would be able to park right where the road ends. However, ever since um, everything has happened with COVID-19, they closed the park for quite a while, and now they have closed it off about a mile and a half from where we normally start walking. So it adds about an extra three miles to the hike, which is a lot of fun. But I hope that you are enjoying the drive here, and pretty soon we will be getting to the entrance of the park All right, everyone, now that we have parked the car and walked approximately the one and a half miles from the car to the actual start of the trail, here we are at the start of the hike to get to Kaina Point Reserve. Here you'll see some of the informative signs at the trailhead, and once you get done reading these, you'll see kind of a time-lapse footage of the start of our hike. It is approximately two and a quarter miles to get to the actual reserve where it's kind of fenced off for the albatross and monk seals. For the next few minutes, there's going to be a little bit of a break from the time-lapse footage, so you can sit and kind of watch this beautiful scenery around us. During this time, I'd kind of like to give you a little bit of information about the Kaina Point Reserve. So in 1970, the state of Hawaii created their Natural Area Reserve System, or the NARS, within the Department of Land and Resources, or DLNR and the Department of Forestry and Wildlife, or DOFA. There are approximately 21 different reserves spaced throughout the five main Hawaiian islands. This covers greater than 123,000 acres. That is just reserved specifically for our marine wildlife. We also see along with marine creatures being protected on these reserves that there are freshwater organisms, 
coastal environments, uh, different lava flows, especially on the Big Island of Hawaii. There are some tropical rainforests that are protected and also even an alpine desert. Many of these areas are actually home to some of the most rare and near extinct plants and animals on the main Hawaiian islands. In terms of Kaina Point itself, this reserve was established in 1983 and it actually protects one of the last intact dune ecosystems in the islands. For the Hawaiian environmental biology course that I teach here for the University of Hawaii, we actually talked a little bit about how early Hawaiians were very good at protecting many parts of the environment, but they did not really see the importance of dunes, unfortunately. So that is why you know, this reserve is really the last dune system that we see on any of the main Hawaiian islands. The dunes were destroyed due to years of coastal development and also invasive species such as the mongoose. When we get a little bit closer to the reserve, you're going to see that there is a fence around part of it. So in 2011, the fence was installed to enclose approximately 49 acres of the Kaina Point Reserve. This helps to keep out the dogs, cats, rats, and of course the invasive mongoose. So even though this whole part that you're seeing right now as well as what we've been hiking so far is technically Kaina Point Reserve, a lot of people generally associate the reserve itself with that region that's fenced in because that's where you're going to see the majority of the albatross and monk seals. You can see up ahead of us is finally the fence line for 
the part of Cayena State um, Reserve that is actually enclosed by fence. I hope that you all have your hiking shoes on because I am definitely already exhausted. Hopefully you brought your water and sunscreen on as well because there is not very much shade on this trail to speak of at all. Here we are about to kind of walk through this fence system. You can see there's a latch that generally the public is pretty good about making sure latches behind them. So we're gonna walk through this um, into the actual fenced in area and you'll see some more informative signs. Now I realize it is a Friday afternoon and you may be starting to get a little bit bored with this video because up until now, well, you've seen some water, you've seen some dirt, and some more water and dirt. But don't look away now because up ahead I think I see our first albatross. What we actually see here are going to be some of the Laysan albatrosses and they Pay, they pair for life and they perform very elaborate courtship dances to try to strengthen the bond between the couple. These are the largest of the Hawaiian seabirds and they only nest on a few locations on the main islands. One of these being right here at Kaina Point on Oahu and really the only other place on the main Hawaiian islands where we see them nesting a lot is Kalea Point on Kauai. Up until this point in lecture, our talk about seabirds has mostly been focused on their predisposition to becoming bycatch in our marine fisheries. There is a lot more interesting information about seabirds though, and in this reserve, there aren't only lace and albatrosses. There are actually many other birds as well. All seabirds generally spend most of their life at sea, and they're going to return to land approximately once a year to nest. 
there are greater than a dozen species of seabirds that nest on or near the Hawaiian Islands, the main five, and then there are an additional six species of seabirds that are not going to be found on the main islands, but they do nest in the more remote Northwest Hawaiian Islands. What's really interesting about seabirds is, depending on the species you're talking about, they kind of have a different stratification of where they place their nests. In other words, there are some that are going to nest up high, some that, you know, will be nesting right on the ground unprotected, like we see with our lace and albatross. For example, if you think of the Hawaiian petrel and the New Walls shearwater, these actually nest very high in the mountains. So if we see any of these today, it'll be just of them actually flying. We won't be able to see their nests. The black Hawaiian nudies nest on the inaccessible sea cliffs and our red-footed boobies nest in the trees. So again, we're not going to see any of these nests today either. The wedge-tailed shearwaters nest in little tiny burrows that really don't have much of a defense against predators. And then, of course, with our lace and albatross, um, you just saw kind of their mating ritual, but you can also see um, kind of how they nest on the ground, and pretty soon you're going to get to see some cool footage of the mother and father albatross actually feeding their younger chicks. Now that we have gotten to see some really amazing mating and also feeding behavior of lace and albatross, we're going to walk over here to what is actually that northwest corner of the island of Oahu. You can see how beautiful it is here with the waves crashing um, and oh wow, look at that. There's even some monk seals here. I hope you really enjoy seeing these monk seals. They are quite interesting and a lot of fun to watch, that is when they aren't busy sleeping.
Here in Hawaii, we love our Hawaiian monk seals, but if you are ever lucky enough to see one, which of course right now you all are, remember that you're supposed to keep your distance. So it's a good thing that we have zoom on our camera so you can see them up close and personal. Hawaiian monk seals are endangered and should not be touched or harassed in any way. We talked about this before when we looked at the Marine Mammal Protection Act of 1972. In addition, Hawaiian monk seal mothers of the newborns aggressively protect their pups, and it's actually dangerous for humans to get too close to them. So the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Association, which we all know as NOAA, recommends keeping a distance of approximately 150 feet, allowing not only the monk seals to remain undisturbed, but also to protect yourselves. What do you think? Next, I'm gonna give you some fun, interesting facts about Hawaiian monk seals. They are the official state mammal of Hawaii, and their scientific name is, yeah, I'm not going to attempt to pronounce that one, but I can tell you their Hawaiian name actually translates to dog that runs in rough water, which is probably why I decided that they are the spirit animal of my oldest dog, Callie. The average lifespan of a Hawaiian monk seal is approximately 25 to 30 years. Adult males grow to be about seven feet long and weigh between 300 and 400 pounds. Meanwhile, the females can grow to be eight feet long and weigh between 400 to 600 pounds. The Hawaiian monk seal is very unique in that they live in a tropical climate. Most of our other seals prefer to be in colder, frigid water. Breeding season for Hawaiian monk seals is between June and August, with the birth of their pups actually occurring between March and June. The average gestation time is nine months. Mothers of the newborn pups are very devoted to their offspring while nursing. For the first five to six weeks of the newborn's life, the mother is so busy safely raising her pup that she starves herself. The pups during this period are going to go from about 35 pounds to roughly 175 pounds while being nursed. The mothers, however, are going to lose hundreds of pounds during this time. Once finished nursing her pups, the mother is going to abandon her offspring and head out to the ocean to feed. It was a really cool experience this past February when I took my Hawaiian environmental biology students out here to Kaina Point in that we got to see one of these young newborn cups, newborn pups. In terms of their feeding, Hawaiian monk seals feed primarily in deep water coral beds on fish, lobster, octopus, and squid. Just like many of our other large marine organisms, humans are the biggest threat to Hawaiian monk seal survival. Though we don't outright hunt Hawaiian monk seals because again, they are endangered and protected by the Marine Mammal Protection Act, they often get entangled in our fishing nets and gear. We also tend to kind of take over their coastal resting places. In terms of natural predators, tiger sharks and Galapagos sharks are known to prey on Hawaiian monk seals. And we also see sometimes that the moms and their pups can be killed by a group of male Hawaiian monk seals when they group up together and kill the females and immature monk seals during a mating ritual known as mobbing. The Hawaiian monk seal is one of only two mammals that's actually endemic to the Hawaiian Islands. By the word endemic, I mean that you can find them in Hawaii and no other place in the world. The Hawaiian and the Mediterranean monk seals are the last two surviving monk seals in the world. We talked about in lecture the Caribbean monk seal, which was once the third type of monk seal that was declared extinct in 2008. 
In 2016, it was estimated that there are 1,400 Hawaiian monk seals in existence. Back in November 1976 is when the Hawaiian monk seal was officially declared an endangered species. I really hope that you guys have enjoyed getting to see these Hawaiian monk seals so up close and personal. They really are an amazing marine mammal that very few people get the chance to actually see. So far, we have got to witness the majestic lace and albatross, as well as the amazing Hawaiian monk seals. But I would be remiss to walk away from Kaina Point Reserve without showing you another really cool feature here the tide pools. If you all have not had a chance to visit any of the tide pool regions in the world, you are definitely missing out. I describe tide pools as a marine biologist's dream because it is so cool to see all the various organisms living in these tide pools and the amazing adaptations they have to allow them to keep from desiccating out in the sun and also to deal with all the wave action, changes in oxygen, temperature, and salinity levels. So I hope you enjoy while our GoPro dives right into a few of these tide pools and gives you a look around.
I don't know about all of you, but I have had so much fun on this field trip to Kyena Point Reserve. I must say though that I am exhausted and I still have a four mile hike back to the car. I hope you enjoyed this field trip and learned a lot about not only Kyena Point Reserve, lace and albatross, monk seals, and tide pools, but I hope that you enjoyed getting to see this beautiful reserve system that is part of the Hawaiian Islands. Thanks and have a great day.